this so well is because we have been social distancing and we cannot let up now. She says the second we take our foot off the gas, we could see another huge outbreak here in the state. Here it is. Keep doing what you're doing. The news about the coronavirus. That's right. The news about the coronavirus. And I think what has been so remarkable, I think, to those of us who have been in the science fields for so long is how important behavioral change is and how amazing Americans are in adapting to and following through on these behavioral changes. And that's what's changing the rate of new cases, and that's what will change the mortality going forward. Because Americans will have to continue following social distancing rules to keep the trend going in the right direction. That means many businesses will stay closed. The president wants Congress to move quickly on more economic stimulus funding. The focus has been on expanding the loan program for small businesses to keep workers on the payroll. And we can do a phase four, and a phase four will be later. This will be an expansion of what we've already done. <laughs> Not cool. The coronavirus has placed more attention on telehealth. Governor Mike DeWine recently signed an executive order that relaxes regulations for Medicaid recipients in Ohio to go to the doctor over video. And on the national level, the federal government is pouring hundreds of millions of dollars into normalizing telehealth. But our Washington Bureau reporter, Taylor Popular, has found that despite the progress, a lot of roadblocks remain. A growing number of hospitals and doctors are overwhelmed by the coronavirus right now. And even if you're feeling under the weather or are due for that annual checkup, you're not alone in worrying about traveling to see a healthcare professional. That's where telehealth enters the conversation. There's this shift essentially from blockbuster video to Netflix, right? So no longer do you have to go to a physical brick and mortar facility to receive care. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you need that type of care, but other times you can get it right on your smartphone. Brendan Carr is a commissioner of the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC, that regulates the very technology telehealth relies on. He said the coronavirus relief package Congress recently passed gives the FCC $200 million more million to expand telehealth immediately. Healthcare providers can now apply for some of the money to set up internet connections for patients or purchase digital equipment that can measure blood oxygen levels or let diabetes patients monitor their blood glucose from an iPad. There's a lot of technologies now that can be delivered right to your smartphone. The key is having that connection. That connection, for many devices, is an internet connection, something over 800,000 Ohioans don't have, especially in rural parts of the state like much of Republican Bill Johnson's Eastern Ohio District. This has really highlighted uh, just how critically important uh, access to broadband is. Commissioner Carr said because of the coronavirus, the government is now loosening regulations to allow internet companies to donate free hotspots and other connected devices to people who don't have access to broadband, all in hopes that more people will try out telehealth. But even if that helps, there's still a learning curve to all of this, especially for senior citizens. Northwest Ohio Congressman Bob Lada is the top Republican on a House subcommittee that works specifically on communications and technology. He said family and friends should try to help out anyone who is new to telehealth. But he also acknowledged that this is a fast-moving trend that needs more rules set in place to make it effective, even after the coronavirus pandemic. The technology is progressing, but we just got to make sure that we have the right legislation and then the right regulations to make sure that they can go out there and then provide, in this case, a life-saving service. In Washington, Taylor Popolars, Spectrum News. You can call your doctor or healthcare provider to find out if you have easy access to telehealth. And there are certain programs like mental health counseling that can be done over the phone if you don't have access to video. Today is the first night of Passover for the Jewish community. It's usually meant for large gatherings at Seder dinners with loved ones. But this year, people will be observing the holiday virtually. Members of the Jewish community say while it will definitely be different than what everyone is used to, they're looking at the positives. People from 
uh, all over the country that uh, you know traditionally you kind of have to choose uh, you have to pick families or you know prioritize whoever's closest and now uh, you can incorporate people from all over the world which is going to be really really fun. Let's do the holiday the way we need to do it this year so that we can do it for many more years to come the way we had become accustomed to. Temperatures are mild once again, a much calmer day. Storm survey teams have been out investigating Summit County, Medina County, Stark County, where we've had three confirmed tornadoes in northeastern Ohio that struck uh, around midnight last night. Much calmer night tonight expected, but we'll still deal with some rain showers. Temperatures running in the mid to upper 50s in Minard and Astrobula, 64 in Cleveland, 65 in Medina, upper 60s in Worcester and Canton right now. So it's mild this evening not quite as unstable as what we saw yesterday even though we've had a good deal of sunshine take a look at the satellite the radar just a few scattered clouds up uh, around ashtabula and not just offshore there otherwise pretty quiet all across the area we had thunderstorms that cluster that came through last night that's what's left of it pushing through kentucky and uh, down into virginia southern west virginia but look at this new watch boxes coming out tornado watch down in southern indiana New severe thunderstorm watch in Illinois. This is heading eastward, but east-southeast. So that means the main uh, brunt of this will stay south of us. You get south of Columbus, that's where we go back under the risk for severe weather. Here's Futurecast, hour by hour. We'll time things out for you through the night. Pretty quiet through 11 o'clock if you're heading out for a walk or a jog. And you've got plenty of distance between you and others. That should be fairly decent. Rain will come in, though, after midnight. Showers likely by midnight to 3 a.m. Winds change direction. Temperatures start to drop here. Mid-40s at 7 a.m., and we just really don't recover the rest of the day. Upper 40s at lunchtime, and more rain showers popping up as we get cold air aloft. You may see some of these showers produce some very small hail just because of the cold air aloft. I don't expect anything severe, but may actually get some ice pellets as uh, the temperatures drop into the 30s, still some lake effect flow here. I can't rule out a few snowflakes Thursday night and into Friday. Future cast hints at some lake effect snow showers here for Friday morning. I doubt we're getting in the accumulation. The ground's just too warm for that. Here's your forecast for the night. Rain showers moving back in. It'll become blustery. Temperatures drop off to 42. May come up a little bit midday tomorrow, maybe up to 49. Temperatures will fall again. There'll be some on and off showers. We'll get a break probably midday. Then the showers will come back in late tomorrow night. We could get some ice pellets or snowflakes. More on that in your extended forecast in minutes. Now a live look at radar. Still ahead, several states will be in the national spotlight as Senate seats are chosen. How the outcomes could affect the rest of the country. But before we head to the break, here are some of the people doing their part to stay home and stay safe. All part of the governor's initiative in this together, Ohio. We've always been Ohio strong. And now we need that strength more than ever. It's up to all of us to stay home, stay positive, and stay healthy. And even though right now we can't gather together, in Ohio, we will always stand together. This is what our communities are made of. The local businesses that keep them thriving. The people who support their success. We stand by you, and we are committed to help. That hasn't changed, and that won't change. Together, we will rebound. And community first. Well, it's really humbling to be invited to our neighbors' homes and help them plan their day. Welcome to your morning news. I'm Sophia Constance. Let's take a look at your weather on the one. We've got a large band of precipitation. Your morning news. Weekday mornings on Spectrum News One. Sunday mornings. Take an in-depth look at your community. In Focus with Mike Kalmar. A half-hour show dedicated to the important issues. Driven to bring decision makers together and committed to elevating discussion and debate. Your community, your state, your show. 
Keep in focus with Mike Kallmeyer, Sunday mornings at 10.30 on Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. Spectrum News 1, a new kind of news channel dedicated to refreshing storytelling and empowering communities across the Buckeye State. With your local forecast every 10 minutes and all of the essential news you need 24-7. Plus, in-depth shows and exclusives focused on your community. Always Ohio, always refreshing, always on. We are Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. Weather and the sky has always fascinated me, and I live with what I do. I come home, look at the weather forecast, and it's really a part of my life. It's not just a job, it is my passion. I'm Chief Meteorologist here, Rick Hillwell. We have a very experienced weather team. We know what's important to Ohioans as they make their plans every day, because we are part of the community. I'm Eric Elwell, Chief Meteorologist, Spectrum News 1. National elections are now just seven months away, and new predictions anticipate Senate races leaning more towards Democratic victories than previously expected. And Wynn has more now from Washington. Analysts now have Democrats edging ahead in Senate races in North Carolina, Maine, Colorado, New Hampshire, and Arizona. Kyle Kondik, managing editor of Sabato's Crystal Ball, says these races are getting more competitive in large part because of impressive Democratic challengers and solid fundraising, such as in Arizona Senate race. Mark Kelly, the uh, likely Democratic nominee, has seemed like a pretty strong candidate throughout the whole election cycle here. He's been continually outraising Martha McSally, the appointed uh, Republican senator. And that's not to say McSally's fundraising has been bad. It's just that Kelly's has really been um, pr pretty, dr pretty dramatically, uh, pretty dramatically good. Whether tipping from a Republican tilt to a toss-up like in North Carolina or a toss-up to a likely Democratic win like in Arizona, the changes in these five states could have a national effect. Now, Republicans are on their back foot defending 10 of the 12 most competitive Senate seats in the country. I think that the, the race for overall control of the Senate is maybe not quite a toss-up. Maybe the Republicans are, are still a little bit favored. Um, but overall, it, it looks like the, the Senate majority is really in play. Overall, things have gotten a little bit better for Democrats over the course of the cycle. Democrats need to win four seats for an outright majority, or win three Senate seats and the White House because the Vice President serves as a tiger. Breaker. Connick says the current state of the economy could spell trouble for Republicans. These are things that might break against the Republicans, although we just don't know. It's, there's also possible that things may look pretty bleak through the spring and the summer, um, but maybe things will bounce back in, in time for the Republicans to regain the initiative uh, in, in the fall. Reporting in Washington, Emlyn, Spectrum News. We're watching closely the threat for thunderstorms moving towards southwestern Ohio, where a tornado watch has been issued until 2 o'clock in the morning. We'll have the latest on the storms and what comes in after the storms move away. It's in my forecast straight ahead. At Spectrum Business, we're so sure that we have the best offer. We called our competitors to put it to the test. These are their actual responses. Thanks for calling. Uh, wondering if you can beat this Spectrum offer. It's a uh, 200 megabit internet and phone for 64.98 a month. No added phone taxes, no fees, no contracts. They give you 200 megabits per second and phone for $65. I don't have anything close. Hear that? Spectrum business is hard to beat. With 200 megabit internet and advanced phone for 64.98 per month, phone taxes and fees included. The Spectrum offer is kind of better than what we're offering. Are they pulling in those fees and taxes? That's madness. I would honestly recommend Spectrum. Honestly, we couldn't say it better. Get 200 megabit internet and advanced phone for $64.98 per month. Call 844-954-0909. That's 844-954-0909. People, you know, people, we don't just know about the weather, we know about Ohio. You never have to wait for your forecast with your Weather on the Ones. Weather on the Ones, every 10 minutes, exclusively on Spectrum. 
Spectrum News One, a new kind of news channel dedicated to refreshing storytelling and empowering communities across the Buckeye State. With your local forecast every 10 minutes and all of the essential news you need 24-7. Plus, in-depth shows and exclusives focused on your community. Always Ohio, always refreshing, always on. We are Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. Maybe I'll run for president, maybe I won't, but I will tell you that I'm not going to go away. And I don't think Michigan can become the Michigan of old. We're probably the first professional sports team in the world that was built by the fans. We're the biggest ice cream shipper in the nation, setting the standard for American ice cream. I get to live my dream. I mean, what more could I ask for? Conversations, Sunday and Tuesday night at 9 on Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. I'm Chief Meteorologist Eric Elwa with your weather on the ones. I do want to thank you for those who sent your weather pictures. We got a lot of those in. We've been sharing those on Facebook, Twitter. If you have more, uh, you can send those to us, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or email us, ohioweather at charter.com. Had quite a bit of rain with that cluster of storms that came through last night, uh, three quarters of an inch uh, to up to an inch. And some of the pockets we did get over an inch with some of the heavier bands. We had three tornadoes confirmed in northeastern Ohio last night. We watched some of the pollen out of the air with the rain now measuring it in the moderate category still tree pollen out there we may get a little bit more rain tonight and tomorrow but the severe weather threat will stay to the south of us you can see all the uh, severe storms breaking out across illinois this is the next cluster that'll come in but this is poised to move east southeast so we think the majority of the severe weather will miss us to the south now maybe a bit of a close call and if we get the storms they'll come in after 11 to midnight, but at that point, I think we're a little bit more stable, certainly a lot more stable than where we were last night. Here's future cast showing that line of showers and thunder showers again pushing into central and southern Ohio by midnight, and then out of here, we'll get just rain showers, four or five o'clock in the morning, then some wraparound moisture comes in as we head into late Thursday and Friday, and there may be just enough cold air after dark Thursday that we could see a few uh, snow pellets. As you can see, we've got the colder air that's really going to be advancing in here for the end of the week. Here's what it does in your extended forecast. You can see temperatures plummet into the 40s. We do have the rain snow icon there Friday. I think if we get any of the snowflakes, it'll be in the morning Friday and then again in the evening. Should dry out for Saturday, begin our warm up for the weekend. Unfortunately, as it gets warmer, we'll get another shot of rain showers Sunday and Monday and then temperatures turn cool again Tuesday and Wednesday typical April weather. Right now, here is a live look at your storm track Doppler radar. As we all try to do our part to flatten the curve, a lot of families are stuck at home looking for something to do. As we continue to celebrate hashtag what Ohio, our Tino Bavinzi has the story of how the Holiday family is sharing their experience through music. University of Cincinnati senior Abby Holiday decided to take everything she was feeling and experiencing about COVID-19 and make a song out of it and post it on Facebook, where it's been shared more than 700 times. She says writing the song was easy because the topic is at the forefront of almost every discussion. I love music and I love writing music and I was like this seems like a good opportunity and I think a lot of songwriters were thinking the same thing um, like how do we turn this into a positive thing. She says the song only took about a day to write with a little help from her family. And since it's been posted, it has more than 30,000 views and people are commenting how much they really like the song. It's 
turned out way bigger than I thought it would, but so many people seem to be relating to it, which is really cool. Like, I was not expecting this kind of response. Part of the reason people are relating to it is because not only does the song share what we're all experiencing, but how the Holiday family is experiencing it all together. Mom and Dad got beer and ice cream. I guess that's how you cope with COVID-19. The Holiday family makes quite a few appearances in the continuously shot music video, which is filmed by her brother Luke, who says it was a lot of fun to create. We knew we wanted to do it in one shot and um, have, have Abby's lyrics and kind of what you're seeing in the background um, correspond with Abby's playing, like being the, the centerpiece that kind of guided the viewer through our house and, and our experience. They say it only took two takes to shoot the video. And near the end of the song, their father Michael, who's a doctor at UC Student Health, joins in on the drums, and eventually their mom on the tambourine too. Abby says the goal was to have everyone in the family take part in the making of the video. We'll talk about the fact that I'm never gonna graduate. Oh no! Abby says the goal was to have everyone in the family take part in the making of the video. Oh, it was really fun just to like bring everybody in, even if it was like a small way, like they're playing code names in the background or, and then of course in the final scene is when we all, we all come out, so. Ultimately, while the video is fun and happy, Abby didn't want to make light of the situation because this is something so significant in human history and they hope people get the overarching message of the song. Stay home, be safe, be with your family, um, and, and make the most of it. Yeah, make the most of it and like don't take this time for granted. For Spectrum News, I'm Tino Bovins. Yeah. We've got more on the COVID 19 crisis coming up, plus your weather on the ones forecast after the break. But first, Ohio Voices. every week actually brightens my week you know I have to be down and I just really look forward to coming here and she's like real super bubbly. It's been good hanging out with somebody that's older than me like if I have trouble with something I can always ask them. Giving her goals to work towards and um, giving her advice also reminds me of the type of person that I want to be. Since she's older than me I feel like she knows more about it because she's been in school more than I have and I feel like She'll help me with what I need with. I grew up with six brothers. I have no sisters. So hanging out with Lanaya kind of gives me a different perspective on what having a little sister is. She is always happy all the time. Every time I see her, she's just happy. <laughs> This is what our communities are made of. The local businesses and the people who support them keep them thriving. The dry cleaners, the car dealers, the barbers, the bakeries, and everyone taking an extra step to support these businesses. We stand by you and we are committed to help. For decades, our local experts who live and work in these communities have been helping American businesses achieve their dreams. That hasn't changed and that won't change. Together, we will rebound. Give me an opportunity to see every corner of the state. I want to empower our communities and redefine what a news channel can be. Every morning, the people of Ohio have the opportunity to wake up and start fresh. We want to be a different kind of news channel, putting storytelling and community first. Well, it's really humbling to be invited to our neighbors' homes and help them plan their day. Welcome to your morning news. I'm Sophia Constantine. Let's take a look at your weather on the ones. We've got a large band of precipitation. Your morning news. Weekday morning is on Spectrum News One. Spectrum News One, a new kind of news channel dedicated to refreshing storytelling and empowering communities across the Buckeye State. With your local forecast every 10 minutes and all of the essential news you need 24 7. Plus, in depth shows and exclusives focused on your community. Always Ohio, always refreshing, always on. We are Spectrum News One, exclusively on Spectrum. Maybe I'll run for president, maybe I won't, but I will tell you that I'm not going to go away. I don't think Michigan can become 
the Michigan of old. We're probably the first professional sports team in the world that was built by the fans. We're the biggest ice cream shipper in the nation, setting the standard for American ice cream. I get to live my dream. I mean, what, what could I ask for? Conversations, Sunday and Tuesday night at 9 on Spectrum News 1, exclusively on Spectrum. here on Spectrum News One. I'm Curtis Jackson. As the coronavirus pandemic continues, we are committed to bringing you the latest information, and here's what we know in this half hour. President Trump says there are 10 drugs in clinical trials as possible treatments for coronavirus. The president adds almost 300 million new N95 masks are being manufactured now, and his administration is considering ordering 200 million more. Here in Ohio, Governor DeWine says a corrections officer in the Mansfield area has died from coronavirus complications. And State Health Director Dr. Amy Acton says the stay-at-home order is working. Ohioans are flattening the curve beyond experts' expectations. I'm Chief Meteorologist here, Rick Well, 932, we want to get you up to date on this tornado watch which is now in effect until 2 o'clock in the morning here for southwestern Ohio. Includes Cincinnati through Dayton over to Chillicothe and Portsmouth. Thunderstorms now just on the edge of coming into Ohio. You can see the warnings are at the border right now here as of 932. Severe thunderstorm warning just over in Ripley, Indiana. That's Franklin County, Indiana. Uh, Union County and Wayne County in Indiana. This cell right here we believe may have 70 mile per hour winds with it as well as some large hail. Just looking at the track of this, this is going to blast into the Cincinnati metro area and clip the south side of Dayton here in just the next 45 minutes or so. Oxford 957, Hamilton at 1011, Cincinnati at 1036, Union at 1050. We will have live weather coverage every 10 minutes as we track the storms here through the night on Spectrum News 1. Eric, thank you. Speaking of powerful storms, approximately 100,000 Ohioans lost power Wednesday morning after multiple tornadoes and high winds swept through the state. Our Ryan Schmel shows us the damage from Summit County, where First Energy says the most power outages happened. We're here in Barberton, where the storms wrecked havoc on homes and businesses, but people are stepping up for those in need. The cleanup is underway for Terry Rastetter and his fiance David at their Scoops ice cream business in Barberton. So right back there is our neighbor's garage um, and this massive pine tree that's been there for many years came down and collapsed his uh, garage and fence and went over to the neighbor's yard. A lot of damage also happened to the homes right behind Scoops, so the staff was relieved to find out everyone they checked on was okay. Well, it was a blessing um, that we didn't have any structural damage or anything like that, but the biggest thing, we want to make sure that um, our uh, Chuck and Sue next door, that they're okay. And we're very close with them and talk with Blake and his girlfriend next door uh, as well. We want to make sure they're okay. Three confirmed tornadoes hit Northeast Ohio overnight in Lorraine, Medina, and Summit counties. Lorraine County also suffered significant storm damage. Here in Elyria, the roots of trees came out of the ground in this neighborhood. Overall, there were as many as 100,000 power outages across Northeast Ohio at one point overnight, according to First Energy. By this afternoon, the electricity was back on for most customers. This is the biggest storm we've had so far this year. Um, we've, we've had bigger storms in the past, but this